To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he have done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We welcome all of you on this first day of Black History Month on this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany to Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church. On behalf of my pastor, the Reverend Lucada and Jumbe, our elders and our deacons of Witherspoon, we welcome most warmly all worshipers. Our fellowship is enriched by your virtual presence. Whether you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, if you do not have a church home of your own, we welcome you to join us and be part of our fellowship. Please contact the church office if you are interested in church membership. We have, of course, the Facebook page and a YouTube page. So we also invite you to like, follow, and share, and comment if you would like more information about the legacy that we are creating, because we are indeed making Black history. We invite you now, most of all, to join us in prayer. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, God who has brought us thus far on the way, we pause to remember those stories that are all around us, but so often passed over. Those stories that when told are shared because of what someone is and not because of who they are, characterized by color, not characterized as personhood. This month in our nation's character is Black History Month. Help us to realize that Black history is all of our histories. 
For when all colors are combined, they create the majestic and magical hue of black and blackness, great and greatness. Great, dear God, is your faithfulness. May the day come when these stories are so wildly taught that there is no need for one month to be separately divided. We know this day will not come until we as a people make different choices about differences and similarities. We now pray for those new choices, those new voices to rise up with the old voices. May we come to see a day when the prison system becomes redemptive, not punitive. A day where the legal system learns to focus more squarely on the facts than on the figures and the finances. A day when our school systems are not a pipeline to the prison system for black and brown children. May our role models like Shirley Satterfield be allowed to excel when they thrive and not be taken down for their rich heritage. We know this will require a shift in power and this can be scary for some. Give those full of fear, hope. May we come to know grace so that our hearts will not be hardened to the pain around us. There are so many beautiful stories, his story, her story, our story needing to be told. And we need to get the chance to hear them widen our vision so that the history that is shared this month and every month come to be known as our history too. For we are most human when we see the humanity and others. Amen, amen, amen. Our first scripture reading for today is Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 21st through the 31st verses. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above and a circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in. Who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing? Scarcely as they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them like stubble. To whom then will you compare? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is discarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will, even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be our almighty God. Amen. Our second reading of scripture comes from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the ninth chapter, verses 16 through 23. Let us prepare to hear the word of the Lord. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I will have a reward. 
but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a servant to all, so that I might win more of them to the Jews. I became as a Jew in order to win Jews to, to those under the law. I became as one under the law, though I myself not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings. This is the word of the Lord, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved, this is Communion Sunday. The first Sunday of the month, the Sunday when we gather together around the Lord's table and reconciliation, reconciliation with God, reconciliation with one another. The Sunday where we remember to remember the holy sacrifice that was made on our behalf. This is also the first Sunday of Black History Month. And for so many, and in so many ways, this represents a problem that needs to be solved. So many do not understand the reason that it was, it is, and should be. This, this formal focus on Black history began as Negro History Week back in 1926, founded by the Dr. Carter G. Woodson, whose famous book, most famous book, The Miseducation of the Negro, described the ways in which a people are systematically destroyed due to a lack of knowledge of self. Hosea 4 and 6 says that my people are destroyed due to a lack of knowledge. And ironically, right from the very beginning, Negro History Week, which was first observed during the second week of February in reverent observance of the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln, who never truly wanted to actually free the enslaved, and Frederick Douglass, who, because he was born into slavery, never truly actually knew his, his real birthday, Negro History Week and Black History Month was and is fraught with certain contradictions. The, the challenges remain with us even to this day. With Black History Month, we set aside the, the coldest and the shortest month of the year to supposedly remember a people that emerged from the hottest continent on the face of the planet Earth and have a history which is longer than any other people of the globe. And we often, in our Negro History Weeks or our Black History Months, we often leave out Africa from our remembrance of our history. And some of us, even today, imagine that it could possibly be liberating to simply think of Black people in America as the descendants of slaves. Nevertheless, there are still others that argue that we should not even have a, a Black History Month. They, they want to argue, well, why not have a, a White History Month? As if whiteness and white supremacy is not already centered 12 months out of the year. And there are still well-intentioned others who have rushed towards the declaration and the designation of certain months as Hispanic history or women's history and other months to carefully 
and politically correctly acknowledge the other diverse colors and spectrums of the rainbow. Yet family, I am convinced this morning on this communion Sunday, on this first Sunday of Black History Month that we have missed it. We missed the true purpose of Dr. Woodson, who was less concerned about the phenotypical depiction of a people's skin than he was about the character and the condition and the context of an oppressed people that were striving to be free. We we missed it. We we missed it as the advocates of, of, of color contest that, that seek to compete in the cataloging of historical Black facts from a glorious past without looking forward to the victory that lies ahead of us to be won in our futures. We focused so often on what separates us from one another rather than fixating on what can bring us all together in victory. We turned away instead of turning to and black has become a point of contention and controversy for so many and in so many ways. During Black History Month, we, we see this in a, in, 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 a, in a quite interesting and profound way within the, within the church. Most white churches during Black History Month do nothing and continue their sins of omission. Most black churches do the same Harriet Booker T, George Washington Carver, Peanut Man, Martin Luther King, MLK, Milk Menu that they've done every year. And most so-called racially and ethnically diverse as well as immigrant communities are often confused and, and remain uh, conspicuously cautious, not realizing how black they and the religious practices that they claim to embrace actually are. Family, in our diversity, we do not quickly see our unity. We do not see our collective legacy of Blackness. We do not see what happens when colors are combined. We do not see a shared legacy of struggle of the oppressed that strives to be free, cutting across and through our real and imagined racial histories. We do not see what happens when the best of our colors are combined. Have you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood what happens when the best of all colors are combined? Let us pray. Lord God, you are an awesome and a mighty God, and you are worthy to be praised. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the first and the last, and there is none like you. We remember you today. We remember that you are a God of those who have struggled, that, that you are a God of a people that have, have been under the weight and force of empire, that you are a God of the oppressed yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We remember you on this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray together and say together, Amen. I don't know if you were paying attention to that first or that second reading of scripture from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. When I read it and when I read it on this Black History uh, Month Sunday, I, I think that the Apostle Paul was on to something that we in the church often miss. Paul understood the importance of discovering unity in our diversity. Paul saw the possibility of a human unity of a people who were the creations of a God as the, as the pathway to victory. I, I mean, we could have just listened to the, the, the prayer that our sister Talitha Kumi Aluwafemi prayed. She could have just 
taken that, that prayer as our sermon for today. But if we, if we look back to the Apostle Paul, Paul said that for though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a servant to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law in order to win those under the law. To those outside of the law, I became as one outside of the law so that I might win more of those that are outside of the law. To the weak, I became weak so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that I might by all means save some, I do it all for the sake of the gospel so that I might share in its blessings. Paul saw a connection. Paul understood that as diverse as the people were as he traveled in his missionary journeys to to, to, to Corinth, to, to Philippi, to Ephesus, as he, as he moved all around and came in contact with Jew and Gentile, with people of different backgrounds, of different languages, of different cultural orientations, that he saw a connection and a unity. He saw that every single one of us were in need of the power of an awesome and a mighty God that is worthy to be praised, a, a God who with an outstretched hand and mighty action Acts of judgment had been a God of freedom, had been a God of liberty, had been a God that wanted to set us free. He saw the unity, even within our diversity, and the unity was that we were a people, that we were a creation, that we are creatures that are broken, that are struggling that are in need of a, of a God that will be the wind beneath our wings, the, the God who has never left us, the God who is available to us to set us free. Paul, like Dr. James Cone, thousands of years later, saw God as a God of oppressed people. When the Dr. James Cone, the father of black Liberation theology thought about this God of the oppressed. And he thought about the, the people that, 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 that God was connected to and God was an advocate for. He defined those people as black. He offered a, a theological description, however, of blackness that, that transcended skin color, that, that transcended racialized phenotypes. When, when James Cone talked about black, James Cone talked about people who are struggling, people who are oppressed, people who have that connection, that commitment, and are bound up to a God of freedom, of justice, and liberation. He said, being black means that your heart, that your soul, that your mind, and that your body are where the dispossessed are. Let me say that again. Being black means that your heart, that's your soul, that's your mind, that's your body are where the dispossessed are. So I need to ask some people this morning whether you're black as a hundred million midnights or whether or not you're, you're light-skinned or white-skinned or red-skinned or brown-skinned or or, or whatever color your skin might be, are your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body amidst the oppressed. That's where I try to find myself. Whether the people be brown people, whether they be white people, whether they be struggling for freedom, whether they be working against violence, whether we're calling for freedom from prisons, whether we're gathering together to discuss the contradictions of race and confronting the lies that we tell to ourselves and each other, we must connect mind, body, heart, soul with those who are dispossessed. That's the measure. That's the standard. 
That's the blackness. That is a commitment, a, a struggle, a dedication that you can find amongst all peoples throughout history, throughout time, throughout space. And the problem is we focus so much on what separates us, on the ways in which we are different and the ways in which we are isolated and removed from one another, rather than seeing us as a people that are in need of a God that wants us to be free. You know, we, we see this clearly when we remember the words of, of, of Martin Niemöller, who was a Lutheran priest during the, the time of the, of, the, of the Nazi Holocaust. And he, and he reflected upon the ways in which we separate ourselves from one another. He said, first, they came for the communist, and I did not speak out because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because... I wasn't a socialist. And then they came for the trade unionist, but I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me. And then there was no one left to speak for me. Martin Niemöller was reflecting upon the way that we define who we are by what we are not. Oh, I'm not a communist. Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a socialist. I'm not a trade unionist. I'm not a, I'm not a Jew. Oh, I, I, I'm, not an, I'm not an immigrant. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm not a same gender loving man or woman. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a transgender man or woman. No, I, 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 I'm not a Spanish speaker. No, I'm not a, I'm not a Muslim. No, I'm, I'm not someone who's poor. I'm, no, I'm not in prison. I don't know anybody in prison. We, we think about all the different ways in which we separate ourselves from one another, not realizing how we need each other, not understanding how God calls us to become one another in solidarity and connection. For a Jew, I became a Jew. For the weak, I became a weak. For those inside the law, I became inside the law. For those outside the law, I became outside the law. Why? Why do I become Jew? Why do I become communist? Why do I become trade unionist? Why do I become LGBTQ? Why do I become undocumented immigrant? Why do I become prisoner for the victory? So that I might win more for Christ. Where are you in your blackness? I don't want to know what type of suntan lotion, what number you would have based on your skin color. How is your blackness defined based on where you are, heart, soul, body, commitments? How black are you really? during this Black History Month? How much do we stand up when we stand up for, 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 for immigrants who are under attack, whose wages are being stolen? When we stand with Chinese families that are being harassed and intimidated outside of their homes, when we, when we stand with those who are returning citizens coming back to our community, what is your barometer for blackness. To what extent are we becoming all things for all people who are oppressed and dispossessed? To what extent are we coming together into communion? I will not argue a single argument about someone who wants to ask about why Black History Month because the history of black people is the history of people who have struggled, is the history of people who have been dispossessed, is the history of people who God has shepherded and shielded, is the history of those who have worked and labored under the threat and under the weight of empire. And black history family is American history. You don't have American history without Black history. Black history is continental history. You don't have any history of this continent without Black history. Black history is world history. Black history is the history of humanity. There are many dimensions and the diversity of our Blackness. 
and you know that you'll be doing what it is that you need to do amidst a, a nation and a culture which does not understand blackness, when there will be times that you will be told that you are too black, and there will be other times when you will be told that you are not black enough, because we have not seen, we have not yet known, we have not yet understood that the best of our blackness is when all of the colors come together as a people who are struggling for freedom under the protection, the inspiration and the direction of the Lord our God. Some of us need to black it up. We need to blacken our faith. We need to blacken our church. We need to blacken our commitments. We need to blacken our minds, our bodies, and our souls. Because these are the struggles of the people of God. And we must become all things to all people so that we might win. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, here I stand. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We bless God today for our pastor, the Reverend Lupata Nkumbe, for that confronting and connecting sermon when all colors are combined. Reverend Njumbe called us out today to blacken it up. He calls out color, character, condition, context, calls us to explore our individual and our collective definition of those words. Have you not known and have you not heard? For it is indeed our collective legacy of struggle of the oppressed by the oppressor, which will create the way we can unite in love serving the God of the oppressed. For it is when all colors are combined that we all may thrive, amen. As we prepare for communion, this is indeed one way that we all can be combined in partaking of the suffering of our one ancestor who was oppressed and lynched and bruised for our transgressions. May we recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 They will come from the north and the south, from the east and the west to come and gather around a table. They will come from Africa and they will come from Europe. They will come from throughout the so-called Americas. They will come from Asia. They will come from Australia and all over the world to come and sit at the table that the Lord has prepared. They're going to look all kinds of different ways. Red and yellow, black and white, but all precious in the Lord's sight. And when they all come together, they come together as a people that are struggling and that are in need of a savior. They come together in belief and in remembrance 
of the Lord our God that made a sacrifice and a commitment so that we might live, live more abundantly so that we might live forever. Family, do you remember the, the blackness of this moment? That on the night that the Lord our God, that Yeshua, that Emmanuel, that Jesus Christ was to be arrested and locked up, the night where somebody had snitched on him, that had turned him over for 30 pieces of silver, that on that night that he gathered together with his people, he gathered together and he took bread, and after giving thanks, he then broke it. And he said unto his people, this is my body that has been broken and has been given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then the same manner after supper, he, he also took the cup. And he said, fam, this is, this is my blood. The blood of the new covenant that is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of sacrifice. Do this in remembrance that my body was broken and given. Do this in remembrance that I gave myself as a sacrifice so that you might live do this in remembrance that even though that it is a dark night, that joy is coming in the morning and that I am the Lord your God. Do this in remembrance of me. So we do black history every first Sunday. We do black history every Sunday. Because when we look at the people of the book, we see a people who are struggling, a people who are oppressed. A people who are in need of a savior whose body was broken, whose blood was shed. And as we eat and as we drink of this cup, we declare the saving, liberating grace of our risen Lord until our Lord comes again. The Romans thought that they had killed him, but he came back on the third day. The enemy thought that they had a victory. But the Lord our God said, Teth, where is your stain? Grave, where is thy victory? Family, today on this first Sunday, this communion Sunday, as we seek to be reconciled with one another and with God, let us eat of the one bread of life. And let us drink of the cup of salvation. Amen. 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 It's the body of Christ. Oh. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou didst become to thee.
Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, oh Lamb of God. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, and relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I Family, let us eat of the one bread of life, the body of Christ, broken and given to us. In remembrance, let us drink of the cup, the cup of salvation, the cup of forgiveness poured out for the remission of all sins. We eat and we drink with thanksgiving. We eat and drink knowing that a God of the oppressed made a sacrifice for us thousands of years ago. We eat and drink reconciled, reconciled with the Lord our God and reconciled with our sisters and brothers, red, yellow, white, brown, and all together, black. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray together and we all say together, amen, amen, amen. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told from the beginning? that it is now time for our offertory appeal. <laughs> this is a part of the service where we all can partake in the rich legacy and history of the Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church, which was founded 180 years ago by a people of faith who were oppressed and displaced for the color of their skin, not by the condition of their faith. In order for us to continue and this great legacy, it not only takes time, it not only takes, takes, I'm sorry, it not only takes your time, it not only takes talent, but it takes your treasure. We have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And in order for us to do that and to keep our doors open so we can continue in this great work during this unprecedented time, we ask that you generously give. Timothy, the sixth chapter, the 17th through the 19th verse says, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus sharing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. As we celebrate our history, let us invest in our present day and in our future. As the offertory hymn goes forth, 
you will have an opportunity to give, to give, to give online or otherwise. Thanks to our Minister of Music, Michael Giddens, for all of the amazing work that he continues to do and ways in which he blesses us through, through the power of music and the power of song. I also just want to thank our sister, a new member, uh, Minister Talitha Kumialua Femi, uh, for serving in her debut as our uh, lector for today and blessing us with her words, with her prayers and her reflections. I want to thank all of those who have been contributing and been giving to Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church, our faithful members who have continued to give, whether it be online or who have given by sending their envelopes here to the office, but also those friends and those non-members, those who have connected with us over this last 10, 11 months when we have been uh, physically distanced, sheltering in the place of the Lord, but separated physically from one another in our sanctuary. We have had contributors and supporters from all over the country and all over the world, and we are so thankful. And I say to you that we welcome you, that we invite you, not simply because of your giving, but because that we have been connected by God for a time such as this. And so if there is anyone out there 
If there is anyone out there who is looking for a church, if there's anyone out there who just needs someone to pray with them and for them, who said, I have decided that I want to become black today. I have decided that I want to stand with the dispossessed. I have decided that I need a Lord and Savior who made a sacrifice for me. Then Put your name in the, in, the, in the comment box. Leave a way for us to be able to get in contact with you. And I commit to you that we will reach out. We are still a small church, a church which is not too large to pay attention to individuals and to be with you in times of need. Test us because we want to be your family that the Lord is calling you to. As we reflect upon that, I just want to share with you that we are all coming together, and I want to, to give thanks on behalf of Elaine Marsh for all of the people who have been calling and texting and checking on her and seeking to contribute as we prepare to remember and celebrate the life and the legacy of our beloved brother, Elder Eugene Marsh, who transitioned from labor to reward on January 29th after a, a long struggle with the coronavirus, with COVID-19. We are so thankful for his life. We loved him so much. We are missing him so much even right now. But I just want to let you know that in the week to come on this Thursday, February the 11th, we will be having his homegoing service and the, and the remembrance and the celebration of his life and his legacy of service. It will be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The, the viewing will be from 10 to 11. The actual uh, funeral service will be from 11 to 12. And it will be on Zoom as well as there will be a limited opportunity for family and a, and a small number of people up to only 50 to be able to worship physically. We will be at the Lighthouse Outreach Ministry Church, now known as Ministerios Fraternidad Cristiana which is on Bellevue Avenue and Trenton. If you would like to attend physically, you must send an email and get put on a list by Michelle Peel. There's information that is in your bulletin in terms of how you can do that. She can be reached at Michelle Peel at Comcast.net. I repeat that if you would like to attend physically, that you must send an email and be added to the list so that when you come, we can make sure that we uh, integrates you into our system of contact tracing where everyone will be socially distanced. It is a large sanctuary, so we do have space in order to be safe, but everyone else is invited to join and to uh, bear witness to the legacy and life of Brother Eugene Marsh on Zoom. That information is also in your bulletin and it will uh, be shared. Well, it's actually not in your bulletin, but it was actually mailed out to you in your virtual fellowship. So if you would like to register, you are also going to need to register. So go ahead, register, become a part of the, the, the Zoom service as well. In this past year, it is the, the way that we have had to transition in the midst of a global pandemic, but we are going to remember and celebrate his life. And I encourage anyone and everyone who is interested to to share the, the, the Zoom information and to reach out directly to Michelle Peel if you are interested in attending in person again. That's going to be on Thursday, February the 11th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on both Zoom and at the Lighthouse Outreach Ministry Church. All are invited to participate. We are moving forward towards the, the celebration of the observance of the season of Lent. Uh, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. It begins uh, February the 17th. There will be a special service, which we'll say more about next week in terms of our Ash Wednesday service. But we would encourage you on behalf of the Christian Education Committee to reach out and to get the Lent liberation confronting the legacy of American slavery by Sh Cherie L. Mills. Um, this is a book in which we are going to be reading through devotionally. Each day during the season of Lent, we will be dealing with it individually. We'll also be reflecting on, for, on the devotions during our morning prayers, which are every Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock a.m. And the name of the book, again, is Lent Liberation, Confronting the Legacy of American Slavery by 
Sherry L. Mills, and you can purchase it on Amazon.com. And it will be not only a, a, a focus of our daily prayers that we do Monday through Friday, we'll also begin to integrate into our Wednesday Bible study as well. And so all are encouraged. You also uh, can check out A Way to Shalom, A Lenten Journey to Peace and Wholeness. And that can be downloaded from the Presbyterian Church USA website. Uh, and if you would like to uh, get that without uh, access of a computer, there is a 1-800 number where you can access that uh, information, that Lenten devotional journal as we move towards the celebration and the remembrance of the resurrection of Christ, which falls on April the 4th uh, this year. Ironically, also the same day of the uh, assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In the week to come, I don't know what you're doing as far as uh, Valentine's Day or Black Love Day. I don't know what it is that you celebrate, but our, our sister church right down the street, Mount Pisgah AME Church, is inviting all uh, from 12 to 4 p.m. to celebrate Valentine's Day with a delicious meal. It is $14 per person. It can be paid on site. Uh, the menu is fried chicken, turkey meatballs, baked macaroni and cheese, string beans, and we'll stop and get too hungry, candied yams, black eyed peas, salad roll, dessert, beverage. You pick it up, it's right down the street, 170 Witherspoon Street here in Princeton, New Jersey. Mask must be worn. Social distancing will be enforced. If you'd like to get more information, you can contact Joyce Johnson at 609-356-0836, or you can contact Mary Brown at 609-883-1920. But the, 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 the love feast is going to be from 12 to 4 p.m. on Sunday, next Sunday, um, which is also the day that's celebrated as Valentine's Day. So please, if you want more information, you can check out your bulletin and find out how you can connect more fully there. I want to also just acknowledge, again, I said as a small church, we remember the, the, the individuals that we have within our church. And we have birthdays uh, and anniversaries that are being celebrated here in the month of February. So I just want to say, I think just this past week and weekend, I think today is actually... Vaughn Rice's birthday. I think he's turning 19 today, so we wish him a happy birthday. Uh, Eugenia Moore, who is 35 years old, uh, uh, had a birthday, I think, on, on Saturday, on yesterday. And uh, Robert Benjamin had a, had a birthday earlier in the week. But look at your list and look at your directory. So Shama Austin Connor, one of our new members, has a birthday in February. Brian Delk and Corinne Johnson uh, also have birthdays in the month of February, Grace Kimbrough and Sammy McGriff, Elsie McKee, my daughters, Alewa and I am Jumbe, three days apart, February 26th is their birthday. Uh, Valerie Smith, Janet Dickerson Stevens, who we are still claiming and holding on to, even though we have members like Valerie Smith and Janet Dickerson Ste uh, Stephens, who are, who are uh, a distance away from us, we are still holding on to them, as well as Jackie Tillman and Elizabeth Zane. Jamie and Jean Escarpetta have an anniversary this month, as well as Ron and Valerie Smith. So reach out to them, send them a card, uh, send them a message, wish them a happy birthday and a, and a happy anniversary. Let them know that you love them, let you know that, that you care about them, that we remember important days together today. Today is also the, the anniversary of the transition from labor to war of a great black history hero who is also connected to our church. I hope you all know who this is. This is Edward Wilmot Blyden. And he is the family, he's the grandfather of our own Isa Blyden. And Edward Wilmot Blyden transitioned on this day, uh, February 7th in 1912 in his home in Freetown, Sierra Leone. And I would encourage you to learn the history. I have all of his books on my on my shelves. I've, I've read his sermons. He is one of the the, the, the great leaders within black history, within African history that, 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 that came from the, the, the Caribbean islands, but, but transitioned through the U.S., that went to Africa, that, that 
played a phenomenally important role in the building and the constructing of the church in general and the Presbyterian church in particular within West Africa and across Africa. He helped to bring about connections and dialogue and relationships between Christians and Muslims. He was born in St. Thomas Virgin Islands on August the 3rd, 1832, but he transitioned our way and came through this part of the country. And, and there's a rich history, which I would encourage you to learn more about and to see his struggle and his commitment to people who struggle. He is black because of his deep commitment to the dispossessed, the dispossessed, those who are in need and are in need of a Lord and Savior. And so for Isa and for all of her family, Deacon, Deacon Isa Blyden, we celebrate your family, our family, the people of God, and we are remembering with you on this day and this hour. And we are so thankful that the legacy of Edward Wilmot Blyden, who transitioned on this day, uh, is still with us and within this, this church, within this Black Presbyterian church known as Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church, 180 years after our founding. Family, we have a lot of work to do. I am so thankful for all of the work that is being done now that we are gathering together coats and gloves and hats. I mean, right now, they've actually closed Witherspoon Street. We're gonna figure out how we get out of here. The snow is, is still falling, but when we distributed food uh, last Sunday along with uh, our brothers and sisters from Princeton Mutual Aid and Unidad Latina and Acción, we noticed that there were people that that only did not have coats, that did not have jackets, did not have hats. They might have been wearing every shirt or t-shirt or sweater that they had in order to try to protect them from the cold. So I would encourage you to, to reach out to your deacons, to reach out to the outreach committee. You can reach out to our, our sister, uh, Princeton Theological Seminarian, field education uh, intern, Lisette Gonzalez Sosa, who is also doing a, a drive with students on the seminary campus in order to make sure that we're able to provide some support to people who are struggling in this time and in this season. People who have not received any of the emergency relief, no unemployment, there's no stimulus check on the way to them and none was ever received. And so we are standing with our community and I'm just so thankful that I'm a part of a blackity black church, that I'm a part of a church that not only has people who are melanated, that not only people who, who, who want to celebrate melanin magic, but, but I'm a part of a church that is actually committed mind, body, spirit, and soul to the dispossessed, to the oppressed, knowing that we serve a God of the oppressed. I'm thankful for being a part of that kind of church. I'm thankful for being connected to and with each and every one of you, and let us stand together. Let us stand together during this month as we see that our history is all intersected. It doesn't mean that there are no value in any other groups of people, quite the opposite. As much as we can look to our legacy of struggle and resistance of people who had skin, who, as they say, kissed by the, the nature sun, we had our John Brown. We had our William Lloyd Garrisons. We, we, we had our, our Yuri Kochiyamas. We, 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 had, we, we had our sitting bulls. We had, we had all of these people who have been connected, who have been struggling for freedom and justice. And still today, we struggle together as one people serving one God with one destiny. So as we pray together on this first Sunday of Black History Month, on this communion Sunday, as we come into common unity, let us focus on the reconciliation and the liberating reconciliation of the Lord our God that will allow us to win. Let us pray. Lord God, you are incredible and we love you. We thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all that you will do. We thank you for making us black, for a people who are struggling in service of freedom justice, equality, and liberty. We thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us through into. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have never left us or forsaken us. Yes, we have seen. Yes, we have heard. Yes, we remember. Yes, we understand. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray together and we say together, amen, amen, amen. Let me just say this as we uh, introduce uh, our, our brother, Mike Wengua, who is going to say something in terms of our moment for mission and Super Bowl Sunday. I also just want to remind all of those confirmants, those who started our confirmation class this past Friday, that you are encouraged and urged to participate in the junior usher ministry meeting that's immediately following the service, that we look to our young people not simply as the future, our young people are our leaders right now. And so we are blessed to bring forward Michael Engwa, who will say something about this Super Bowl Sunday on this Super Bowl Sunday, but pay attention to the way that we have taken that which is familiar and made it into something even better. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. I am Michael Nguo. I have served for two years as the treasurer of the Junior Usher Ministry. Today, thousands of football fans will be sitting in front of their TVs with all kinds of favorite food to watch and cheer for the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. While we enjoy the Super Bowl game, today there are thousands of children and their families who are looking for their next meal, even a place to live. Thankfully, there are many organizations that come to the aid of our needy citizens, and one that members of the Junior Usher Ministry has been supporting for over 20 years is the Super Bowl of Karen. That's super, S-O-U-P-E-R, bowl. The Super Bowl of Karen is a youth-inspired movement involving students throughout the United States who through their churches, schools, and civic groups collect donations and, and, for, and from their institutions to support a worthy charity. It started in 1990 when a seminary intern prayed, Lord, even as we enjoy the Super Bowl football game, help us to be mindful of those who are without a bowl of soup to eat. In 2020, thousands of youth groups collected over $10.6 million. The Junior Usher Ministry was again one of those groups. We collected $624 from our congregation last year. Through the years, our donations have been reported to the, to, the, to the Super Bowl of Caring headquarters, and the donations have been given to several local charities. For five years, we have given our donations to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and we will decide whether to, give, whether to continue giving to this charity or one that is in need due to the pandemic. Because of our appeal that was in the bulletin last week, we have already received over $100. We know that we may not reach $600. However, we are asking that you give what you can so that the members of the Junior Usher Ministry may continue to join thousands of youth to support the many children in need. When you give, please designate it for the Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R, Bowl of Caring. We will give a report of the amount donated and the charity our church will support. The members of the Junior Usher Ministry, thank you very much and care for your support. as we are waiting on sending him we are one in the spirit ascending him we are one in the spirit we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord and we pray that all unity may one day be restored and they'll know we are christians by our love by our Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. 
each other. We will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father, from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son. And all praise to the Spirit, who in order. When they come for the LGBTQ, we become same gender loving people. When they come for those who do not speak English, we begin to say buenos dias and bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When they come for those who are in prison, we imagine as we are told within the book of Hebrews to remember and to imagine that we are in prison ourselves, as Paul says to the believers at Colossae, remember my chains. So when they come for us, we will be standing together and we will be known as Christians for our love. We will be known because we have stood with the dispossessed and the disinherited. We will be known as those who stand up in the legacy of the best of our black history. The spirit of the Lord is upon us and has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor, release to the captive, sight to the blind, and freedom for all who are oppressed. May the Lord be with you as you move forward into this day and into this journey and into this struggle. Together we will become who it is that we need to become so that we can win. Amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church. the church say amen. Lift every voice and sing 
Till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Peace of Christ be with you. And with you also. Peace of Christ be with you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Peace be with you. Good morning, Isaac. Thank you, Michael. You did a good job. Great job, Michael. Thank you, Talitha Kumi. Thank you, TK. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Hello. Shirley. It was awesome. Hello. Great to see Hi, everyone Seth. from Connors. Hi, Hi, Nene. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Linda. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Mommy. Karen. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Jack. Hi, Joan. and Jimmy. Hello, everybody. I'm Mariano. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Oh, I thought I was going to see you guys. Good morning, Reverend Mercado. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. Hello, Hello, Hi, 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 baby. Hey, 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 Thank you. Hi, Linda. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. 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 All right, I gotta go. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Sharon. Isa, it was nice to hear about your grandfather. Oh, she left. Oh, where is Isa? There she is. She came back. Yes, yeah, she, she came back. So you were hiding, Isa, huh? Oh, there she is. Yeah, it was nice to hear about your grandfather. That was great. Yes, so, yes it was. Yes. Uh, he was big. He was in Princeton. Yeah. I'm he was in Princeton. Princeton. Yeah, I, I, that's how he, he got his education. He was sent from Princeton. Yeah. Oh. So okay. I said, now you can get my book. It was Sierra Leone. <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> also, I like your hat. Thank you. Did you get my card? I sure did. I just got it. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Sharon, thank you very much. I'm still coming. I haven't, I haven't, I know you're mad at me, but don't be mad. <laughs>